Did you have any connection to this play before? Did you know? No, no, I hadn't heard of it before at all. When Charlotte told me about the job, she was like, you should read this right now. So I like downloaded it and read it. And then I was like reading a bunch of crazy essay notes. It's like really awesome. I really like mm. to see it actually as a play. Because like, she's an absolute badass. Like even though she's <laughs> a little bit of a bitch, like I like the fact that she wants something and it's like, I don't care if it's really wrong. I'm not going to think yeah, about it yeah. any deeper than this is what I've chosen to do. It's a bit awesome sometimes, a bit admirable, but like, you always find out, you know, like, in any case of rebellion, you always get a little bit fucked up. But it's being able to handle it and not, I guess. Mm. What about you? How do you feel about it? I know you're directing it. I haven't really, ever really, like, seen any plays, so I don't know mm. how. Well, I'm not directing the play exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an idea I got from the play and I'm doing something totally different, more personal and more... Um, it's like a lecture about Antigone. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's funny somehow because the lecture is being held by four skiers, so the champion, champions. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> they come in with their skis and all the equipment <laughs> and everything. And, uh, no it's way. funny how they come in and all the noise, you know, and they that sit down and they... So just, intense. Yeah. So, and then they, st they start explaining the play through their experience from skiing. So it's all very That's twisted from the beginning. That's such a crazy way to yeah. think about it. <laughs> it's mental. No way. That's so cool. That sounds so interesting. I really love to see that. Yeah. Well, and then they, you know, they, they start then saying things about themselves so they become somehow also the uh, these characters so there is an antigone somehow at the end it's a girl yeah and she starts talking about herself and then she's being eaten by a polar bear at the end so oh she takes God. the equipment off and she's in blood and somehow she becomes this maybe, yeah maybe i will develop it also more i don't know that and say something incredible. about death. I don't know, I'm thinking about the I mean, There's so much to say about death, especially when you choose it, you know, for yourself in so many ways and the choices you make. Yeah. But there's so much to say about it and there's so many ways that you could approach it from that way. I really like mm. polar bear. I really <laughs> like polar bears. They're so cute. Have you ever seen a polar bear cub? I really mm -hmm. want to hold one. No, I've never seen no. one. Oh, my no. God, they're so cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I love bears. But yeah, that's incredible. That's cool. so awesome. Oh man, I'd really love to see that. I really love All to see animals that. are nice, I think. More yeah. pretty than people. What's your favorite sure. animal? <laughs> like, favorite animal ever? Look, I like the horses. Yeah, yeah. I like horses. They're calm and really strong, but just calm. Mm. And like how like they just stay away from other people. I like wolves. Yeah. Wolves are my favourite. They like have a really strong like pack mentality and I just like it. I just yeah. like the yeah. way that they go around and like how special it is. I hate that there's no wolves in England. Yeah. Like they hunted them to extinction like years ago. Cause they suck. Cause they suck so bad. But yeah, I wanna <laughs> have like a wolf conservation yeah. one day. Just live in the forest and like look after baby wolves yeah. all the time. <laughs> Away from that like, humanity. Just is it so calm. Just be in the trees with wolves. I love animals. You're you're looking for calmness. Yeah. You're talking about it a lot. Right? Yeah, I do. I always <laughs> look for a calm space. Like even though I grew up in London most of my life, like I remember very much like the countryside mm. when I was a kid and just being tranquil and just finding like I was always okay by myself mm. as a child. Mm. But I always like exploring places and like just being in forests and like climbing trees and yeah. like I know that there's so much more and it feels so different to what we feel every day here especially yeah, so I'm definitely searching for that calm place in my yeah. future I definitely know I'm gonna live in the middle of a forest <laughs> it's gonna be pretty good what about you? Do you yeah, me too. Do you I plan like on that. Staying in Athens forever. I I have a small house on an island, That's a big amazing. island. 
and I, so cool. I think sometimes I could live there forever. Or I think sometimes I would like to be in a cave, you know, with beard mm -hmm. and hair yes. and just stay there forever. Yeah. Really. Sometimes isolation <laughs> is really, really special. Really special. I just like being alone with lots of books. Mm -hmm. It's just like, this is the safe space. Yeah. It's good. I don't know. People are weird. Very. <laughs> Very. <laughs> it's always nice to feel that you're not one of them yeah, when you're exactly. surrounded by everybody all the time. <laughs> it's a strange world. Yeah, it's good. I don't normally talk to people that much unless mm. I'm like drunk. But yeah, it's funny. It's good. I feel something in common with you. Yeah, you definitely. Which is great. <laughs> it's good. It's not very often that I talk enough to people to find anything in common. Which is um, cool, and especially yeah. through this, through the show Studio Family and through this story that I've only read really recently, but I find really powerful and awesome in so many ways. Maybe not in so many that I, like, relate to personally. Yeah. But still, like, she's a little bitch and she doesn't listen to anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. It's crazy because it's all like, I'm still at a very different stage of understanding to you, someone that's analyzed this and sees it from like a totally different point mm -hmm. of view where you can make something totally different. Yeah. But still, like, I feel like there's definitely a common ground, mm. which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, would you like to act? Have you thought of it or is this, you don't? Um, sometimes I've thought about it, but sometimes like, I haven't thought about it more than just me, like, going over the top with whoever, who I already am. So I was like, I would probably try acting if it was someone that was like me, mm. and I could just be a bit over the top and just apply my own feeling to that. But I don't know, I don't know. I used to be a really good liar when I was a kid, mm -hmm. so I think I'd be able to do that. And I love stories. I'm always in a different world in my head, always. It's something that I definitely like to do. But I just like observing. Mm -hmm. I like kind of saying what I feel and what's in my head, but in not a too easy way to understand. You know, you have to work for it or just create your own picture around it. It's strange. There are a lot of things I want to do. Mm. I want to make films of my friends. I want to do weird acting maybe one day. Mm. I want to make weird dolls and shit. There's just so much to do all yeah. the time. I'm just like I have no time. <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool. It's just vomit. Vomit your mind yeah. on everyone. There's something that maybe in your day, or not every day, I hope, but if there's something that you would really die for? Yeah, there are a lot of things I would die for every day. <laughs> a lot of things, because I love very little, but I feel a lot. Um, I don't know, in a sense, I've kind of spent a lot of my time slowly isolating myself from outside influences, from negativity and from people trying to control me, or just anyone that f makes me feel like I'm not what I want to be, and that's anything that anyone's agreeing with, mm. to be honest. But yeah, I'd die for my mum, I'd die for my family, I'd die for what I have to say, even if I don't believe in it, just because I'm that much of a stubborn bitch. <laughs> I'd die for my boyfriend, for my little sister. I'd die for a lot of things. It's crazy, I'm young and like I feel too much, but I'm learning slowly which is crazy. <laughs> I think it's kind of just so oh, over the top. This is like the moment for me in my head where I'm like coming out my teenage years and I'm trying to like squeeze the sponge of all of the mad things that have happened to me and like the ways that I've learned to interpret them. And so like, I don't know. I'm worried because I don't think about that every day. I'm mm. just like, what would I die for today? I don't think that enough because I know full well that I could totally die five minutes time, just like go and have a brain aneurysm or something. <laughs> That's something that I'm glad you asked me because I have to think about that a lot. But yeah, <laughs> I die for a lot of things. Mostly I just die to make myself feel like I'm happy and I'm making myself personally proud because no matter what I do, 
I don't know, my actions may not reach other people before I die. <laughs> so it's always just making yourself proud. <laughs> Definitely.